Good morning everyone and welcome to Good Morning PNG. Thanks for joining us and she is back after a one week break. <laughs> Shaz, morning. <laughs> morning, I thought Taz. left you at uh, the Mor police station. Morning, everyone. <laughs> I actually was on like an extended break for my birthday last week. So oh, yeah. yeah, happy belated. Great to be back. <laughs> it's been a big week, especially out Waigani Way. And also, Taz, it was Grand Chief Sir Michael's, uh, Sir Michael Samari's birthday on Tuesday. Our founding father celebrated 83 years. Month of Legends, April. <laughs> yes, yeah. and uh, happy belated to you, sir. From all of us here at MTV, 49 years, Shaz, in mm. politics before his retirement in 2017. The only guy that's never been beaten, longest serving Commonwealth politician, uh, unbelievable achievement. And on that note, it's morning to the panel. And Shaz, this is like musical chairs. They yeah. hear one week, gone the next. <laughs> Mary Batua is away again, it. but our head of news has been kind enough to step in. Neville Choi, Neville, morning to you. Good morning, Taz. You know what it's like in news? News never sleeps, so. Well, the alarm Apparently. <laughs> yes. We won't get into that. Yes, we won't. <laughs> Okay, Paco, big week for you in the world of entertainment. Yeah, we're covering the NAACP awards, but that'll be later on. Awesome. Richard, how's it going? Well, you know, nice so jacket, Shaz, please. <laughs> I know, we've seen it before, but we won't get into the details of it. Yeah. You look good, mate. Thank you, thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Peter Pusal, morning, mate. Hey, Shaz, morning, morning, guys. Hey, the game fishing titles that's on? Started? Yes, started yesterday, uh, I think off the coast of Hula for you guys out in Central. You know where that is? Yeah. I haven't been there, so. I still want to get there. Place. I've heard, I've heard yeah. it's a you wonderful place. <laughs> <laughs> so about that it. That makes the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fantastic. Thanks, guys. And we go straight to the news, and here's Neville Tree. Thanks, Tez. Now, in the big news of the week, to one, and fi uh, Finance Minister James Marape this week announced his resignation. He said that the, he had lost trust, <laughs> uh, lost the ear of Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. And uh, he still remains with the People's National Congress. He was the PNC's first candidate to be returned in the last election. And he said he, he had lost the confidence and he's making way for the prime minister to select new blood, as he puts it, of, for the cabinet. And uh, he's given up his finance portfolio, but he remains the member for Tari Pori. The prime minister, when pressed on the issue on Thursday, said from New Island that he accepted Mr. Marape's resignation and said that important work for the development of the country would continue regardless. And as of yesterday, and as expected, social media was rife with rumors that several other ministers would also be resigning. The Minister for Defense and Member for Telephone, Solan Mirisim, was rumored to have resigned also. But yesterday, Mr. Mirisim told the media that all that was being shared on social media was not true. My voters, people of Telephone, our PNC Defense Force organization, and the entire country that the news on the social media yesterday of me, Honorable Solan Mirishim, the Minister for Defense and the member for Telephoning, uh, being resigned as the Minister for Defense yesterday is all fake, is all false, and is not true. And the 262 kilometers along Buleminski Highway in New Ireland was reopened this week by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill after it was upgraded and completely sealed. The highway, which runs the length of the province from Caving down to Nomatanai, is now the longest sealed road in the Pacific region. Originally named Kaiser William Schoss during the German protectorate, it was renamed in 1921 to the East Coast Road. After the country gained independence in 1975, the highway was again renamed after Franz Boleminski, who was a German district officer from 1910 until the First World War. And that's it for the news this week on Good Morning PNG. It's back to you, Taz and Sheza. Thanks, Neville. You'd be happy the uh, long-awaited sealed road. Oh, well, shares you as well. Yeah. It's, it's been long-awaited. It's been sealed in patches before, but right. But as of now, it's sealed all the all way. All the way. To yeah. Now, no problems with you traveling in your four-wheel drive after you get off the yeah. aircraft. I'll have to find the four-wheel drive first, but yeah. it's a good road. <laughs> Caving to Namatana, here we come. <laughs> All right, and now for the sports news, it's a very good morning to Peter Pasal. Thanks, Shaz. Firstly, in rugby league, the ESP PNG Hunters make the long track to Emerald Queensland today for their round six intra Super Cup clash against the CQ Capras at Alan McIndoe Park. Winless after five rounds and looking like a wooden spoon contender in 2019, coach Michael Marum takes a side featuring yet another change to his halves, with Jerry Temis set to wear the number seven jersey alongside 5'8 Aze Boas. Moses Meninga, Charlie 
Simon, Staten Albert and Blenda Barber returned to the side after missing last week's 28-6 loss to the North Devils. The game plan, the game is, is scheduled to kick off at 6.35 p.m. this evening. In athletics, qualifying next year for the Tokyo Olympics is the main goal for jumper Rally Caputin, who is on the Gold Coast for a training stint. Caputin, who is the Pacific Games champion and women's national record holder in the long, triple and high jumps, said she would initially be focusing on the Apia Games in July, but her long-term goal was to build up form in order to qualify for the 2020 Olympics. The 26-year-old, who won three gold medals at the 2015 Pacific Games, last competed at the National Trials in Kimber, West New Britain, last month, where she was the only elite competitor in the women's jumps. Caputin will train under coach Philip Newton on the Gold Coast until the Pacific Games. And in fishing news, the 44th National Game Fishing Titles started yesterday off the coast of Hula, Central Province, with a confirmed 150 anglers in 20 boats taking part in the nine-day event. Fishing started from Hood Point towards Gaira and Red Scar Bay. Anglers from around the country and as far as Cairns, Australia, will compete with the aim to catch a variety of skipjack tuna, mackerel, marlin, billfish, and rainbow runners for points. According to Tournament Director Matthew Gagan, boats will be allowed to go out as early as 5 a.m. and line in at 6 p.m. With while weighing is at 7 p.m. Any boats coming in later would be disqualified. The final day of competition is Sunday, April 21st. And in NRL scores overnight, round five of the NRL kicked off Thursday night with the visitors West Tigers beating the Brisbane Broncos 22 points to 16 at Suncorp Stadium, while last night the Titans got over the Panthers 30 points to 24 on the Gold Coast, while the undefeated Melbourne Storm continued their winning ways over the North Queensland Cowboys at Dairy Farmers Stadium, 18 points at 12. And while Cameron Smith became the highest point scorer in that game uh, of all time in the NRL, the news was not so good for our Kumul, Nene McDonald, who faces a possible season-ending injury with a fractured uh, ankle and left ankle. So hopefully he recovers from that. But those are the top sports stories for this morning. Shares. Thanks, Peter. And yeah, our wishes to Nene on a speedy recovery. That was quite harsh though it's yeah. been the talk of social media uh, after the game last night well, hopefully hopefully he comes back but uh, with ankle injuries if it's a break it might be a long term thing you could we might that's not see not him good. until the end of the season or maybe yeah. next year so that's not good for us um, the Digicel Cup as well Yes, the Digicel Cup kicked off last week and uh, we had some interesting uh, results the um, uh, the, we've got a double header tomorrow sorry we've got uh, we've got the ESO playing the Lahanis and right. The Dabaris, Central Dabaris, uh, playing the Mount Hagen Eagles. So the two, well, at least the Central Dabaris are the new team in the comp, and they did well last week beating the Kimber Cutters. Yeah, they did too. 34 points to 20 in yeah. Kimber. Right. Cheers. Absolutely, and thanks, Pete. And it's time for the weather now, and Richard McGay. All right, thanks, uh, Taz and Shaz. Uh, look, let's get straight into the uh, main center focus, shall we? Up at uh, Port Mosby, which is probably fine. It will be fine throughout the day with a possible shower or two. Uh, Daru, cloudy with a few showers. Uh, Kerama and Popandeta, cloudy with rain and drizzles. And for Alotau, partly cloudy with a shower or two. Up to uh, Leh, uh, it'll be fine and partly cloudy uh, in the morning with a few showers as we go along. Uh, in Medang, rain, showers and thunderstorms. Uh, we were cloudy with a few showers, and in Vanimo, it'll be cloudy. It'll be an overcast day. To the NGI region, Kokopo and Rabaul, fine and partly cloudy with showers developing during the day. Mm -hmm. Lorangao, partly cloudy with showers developing. Uh, KV and cloudy periods with a few showers. In Kimber, there will be a uh, cloud or two and a few showers. Mm -hmm. And in Buka, obviously, cloud and uh, showers uh, with rain developing throughout the day and into the night and up to the highlands, Mount Hagen, rain and showers, and then morning fog, and a cloudy day forecasted. With uh, Gorka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabeg, morning fog clearing to rain and drizzles, and a cloudy afternoon. And yeah, that's it for the weather this uh, morning, Shaz. Thanks, Rich. That's the news, sports and weather to get us underway this morning. And Taz, what a show we have today. Yeah, Shaz, huge. We're talking to the president of the Autonomous Region of Bougainville, Chief John Momis, I can't wait for that interview. Leon Gawi is Yay! back with the Brownville Product Grab. Lovely segment. And we'll be giving you some ideas on employee incentive, Chef. Ooh, nice. And also, Taz, um, MTV's Lay Bureau Chief, Scott White, one of my favorite people, will be joining us this morning to talk all things news in our regions. And our panel discussion this morning is on the extinction of wildlife disrupting the eco-balance. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on that, Chef. So stay tuned. <laughs>
<laughs> we're up for a break. You when better we... learn something. <laughs> I will. I will. I can't wait. You will. We're up for a break. When we come back, all the entertainment goes with AKA Pack Up. Stay with us. Welcome back. It is now time for our weekly dose of entertainment news and here's Ikea Pakop. Morning, Ikes. Morning, guys. Just over a week ago, the 50th NAACP Image Awards was held. Now, this is an annual award ceremony presented by the U.S.-based National Association for the Advancement of Colored People to honor excellence in film, television, music, and literature. Similar to other outstanding awards like the Grammys and the Oscars, which was held earlier this year in Feb. Now, there were well over 40 categories presented at the NAACP Image Awards. Just to highlight a few, Black Panther won the award for the Outstanding Motion Picture Award. The Outstanding Actor in a Motion Picture went to Chadwick Boseman for his role in Black Panther with Michael B. Jordan winning the award for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture. The Outstanding Actress in a Motion Picture went to Amanda Stanberg for her role in the movie the Hate You Give Us, The Hate You Give, the Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Motion Picture went to Denai Gurira, who also starred in the movie Black Panther. Letitia Wright won the award for the Outstanding Breakthrough Performance in a Motion Picture, also for her role in Black Panther. It was a great night for the Black Panther cast and crew as they also won the awards for the Outstanding Ensemble Cast in a Motion Picture. Under the overall recording category, the outstanding duo, group, or collaboration, and the outstanding soundtrack slash compilation. They also took out the award for the outstanding directing in a motion picture. And lastly, the outstanding writing in a motion picture. Those of you fans of Taraji P. Henson, Taraji won the award for the Outstanding Actress in a Drama Series for her role as Cookie Lion in the television series Empire. Bruno Mars won the award for the Outstanding Male Artist. And Tony Braxton was the award winner for the Outstanding Song Traditional Long As I Live produced by Def Jam Records. Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, gained worldwide, worldwide recognition, earning her the award for the outstanding literary work, biography slash autobiography from a grounded pragmatist at heart. The book is compelling, worth the read, and I say highly recommended. The outstanding literary work, Instructional, went to Damon John for his book, Rise and Grind. Outperform, outwork, and outhustle your way to a more successful and rewarding life. It's become a bestseller. Damon John does not disappoint with his straight talk and realism on preserving in spite of your circumstances. Grit, persistence, and good old-fashioned hard work are the backbone of every successful business and individual. A very inspiring book and a must-read. They even had the award under the animated or CGI category for the outstanding character voiceover performances for television or film. And that award was given to Samuel L. Jackson in the animated movie Incredibles 2. Two more other awards worth the mention. Beyonce won the Entertainer of the Year Award and her husband Jay-Z was announced the winner for the President's Award, which was one of the four awards under the Special Awards category. Game of Thrones fans, the beginning of the end premieres tomorrow. GOT's final season will only have six episodes, but they will have the longest average episode length of any Game of Thrones season. Spoiler alert for episode one, season eight will have to revisit many of the various relationships that the show has established over the years. We can expect some big emotional reunions that will pay <coughs> off major moments set all the way back in season one. Live for one night only, Just Stone will be performing live at the Lamana Gold Club. You can visit Lamana Reception to purchase tickets. And also a reminder for tomorrow, if you're not doing anything, go to the Motlock Culture Fest, which will be held at the Sir John Guy Stadium. 
showground, the hot traditional foods and the cultural performances from the Motlock Islanders is something you may not want to miss. So get your tickets today. Take note of the phone numbers on the flyer that's appearing on your screen. And that's all with entertainment for this Saturday. Awesome work, Alex. The Motlock Culture Festival tomorrow. Yeah. Is uh, Archie Tazi going to be there? Yes, he is playing. He is. Oh, He's one of the artists. Oh, and Christiani as well. Christiani, the yeah. They're, they're backed up by the Masterpiece Band. I saw them practicing yesterday. Well, let's hope it turns up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that? Oh I, I want to get, get the book Becoming by yeah. Michelle Obama. I heard it's just a great read. He's got so many views and people are buying it. I've seen a couple shelf. of my friends like post selfies on Facebook. They've read it. I want to, I want to get a copy. Neville, do you have a copy of that? No, no I don't. No. I of all of us here, you Game should have Thrones. one. <laughs> I saw, I saw him and you guys getting excited for Game of Thrones coming up. Who's yeah. Him? Oh my God, I love it. Okay, I'm a, I'm a I fan. Haven't, I'm I a haven't fan. Even watched a single Hands up yet. if you have watched on the panel, if you've watched Game of Thrones, any season, uh, episode of the Game of Thrones. The Richard, Richard's a fan. Only fan. three of us. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not, uh, they're not as cool as us. So. Wow, guys. Wow. Buy the DVD and watch the, you know, the whole eight seasons at some point. You're yeah, gonna, you're, you're gonna never going to yeah. get that. You're never going to get there. <laughs> get long, long weekend coming up, buddy. Easter hey. weekend. Hey. Right. Okay. We're going to go for a break. When we come back, uh, it's time for the Brian Bell product grab with Leon Gowie. You're watching Good Morning PNG. Stay with us. He may be gone, but he's left his music track with us. Thanks, Mariba. <laughs> Welcome back. All right. Joining us on the panel right now for the Brian Bell Product Grab is Mr. Leon Gowie. Yeah. Morning, morning, Leon. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm good. Hi, mate. Looking fresh, Yourself? looking funky this morning. Easter coming up. Trying to keep up with you, mate. Uh -huh. Yeah, Easter's coming up, <laughs> so big time for Brian Bell. And uh, big things for Easter, week Easter weekend? Yeah, look, there's a long weekend coming up, so there's, you know, Obviously, in PNG, people like to travel and yeah. um, along the highways, you know, flying by sea. But we've got some great products there that can help people during this time when they want to start their traveling on the Thursday or returning even on the, the Monday, Monday mornings, Monday afternoons. Yeah. Like um, one of them is one of the brands, one of the big brands that we carry there is Coleman, which is a product that's synonymous with quality. And many Papua New Guineans know it. Um, Many Papua New Guineans use it, they have it, and they've had it for lifetimes. It's a generational brand as well, it's passed on. Yeah. You know, Eskies, coolers. Eskies, coolers, yeah. Pete was interested in the tent. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't? I was going oh, to he suggest he that as a gift to you guys. Why are you taking that away from me? <laughs> you, you got the four men tent, so that's Peter, Neville, um, Taz, and should we throw in Richard or not? Throw him in, yeah. throw him in. <laughs> Oh, Alright, you got to comment and you don't need a man cave, guys. So that that's it. That's my parting gift to you for no, no, Easter. That, that's the portable man cave. So yeah, that's got the it. man cave. I mean, come on. Thank yeah. you for the advanced gift. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you, Leon. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, just use Leon's name. Double discount. Double discount, Leon. Okay, you had a question for him, didn't you? What are you doing for Easter? What am I doing? What am I doing for Easter? Um, I'll probably be uh, catching up on all the sleep that I've lost. You know? No, I'm just kidding. I'll be, I'll be just spending time with family. Um, nothing much on. Not going anywhere. Just relax. Enjoy the sights and sounds of Pom. Yeah, that's probably what everyone else will yeah. be doing in for Easter as well. Just, it's fa it's a family thing. Yeah, everyone get gets to, together. Um, and I think I might get out to one of the, you know, watering holes around town and... Okay. Swim. <laughs> I meant like for a swim. Yeah, all right. A swimming pool. Right. Rocky Hill Park. Rocky Hill Park. I was thinking about Rocky Hill Park or out at Kuriva, you know, out along the highway there. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, cool. But, uh, Leon, trading hours for Brian trading Bell. Oh, right, yeah. Yes. Special trading hours. Basically. Yeah, special trading hours. So Brian Bell will be open. Uh, Brian Bell Vision City. So if you're looking to shop during that time, Brian Bell Vision City will be open all Easter long weekend. Um, Gordon's will be open on Saturday, half day. Sunday, they'll be closed. Monday, they'll be back to regular trading hours. And so will Plaza and Nationwide as well. So all eight home centers will be open 
to midday on Saturday. Uh, Sunday they'll be closed except for Vision City and on Monday we'll resume trading hours as per usual. So we're uh, looking forward to you guys coming in. Absolutely, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, get the, the tent. For your family. Yeah, of no, course. The tent. The tent. The tent. For my kids. I need someone to lock them up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the after sales service warranty. Brand yes. Unbeatable. Unbeatable. Exactly. Um, well, all the products that we stock and sell, we back, up. back it up with our service department. And there's, you know, it just gives that value to you when you shop as a customer. It's something that's um, late Sir Brian has instilled in the company and it's carried on. It's just brand new tradition now. It's what we do. Good stuff. Fantastic. Thank you, Leon, for joining us again this morning and we will see you again in a couple of weeks. Okay. Thanks, Leon. Now, um, one of the things we want to talk about this morning is um, employee incentives. Yes. Employee incentives are ways of compensating and motivating employee performances in order to push employees to do their best in every part of their job. Apart from the obvious ones such as a pay rise, bonuses, or a vacation, on the screen are five effective employee incentives that an employee can use to motivate its employees. There you are, starting from the top. Yes. Uh, employee yeah. recognition improves morale, health and wellness programs, social and networking events. Number four, tuition reimbursement and learning opportunity. Mm. Yeah, that was quick. What was the number five? <laughs> I was still reading through that. That's as fast as I want on HR. Flexi hours and telecommuting. That's what I want. Yeah. Flexible hours. Flexible like hours. Like coming at four o'clock in the morning on Saturday mornings. <laughs> Stop complaining. You love it. Come on. Yeah, absolutely. I like the social and networking events. Yeah? So, yeah. You look like a bit of social butterfly. Chess. What I do. And I do it well. So I like it. <laughs> All right. Right, well, our crew also caught, got views from the general public on employee incentives because workers are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in the uh, informal sector. It's probably uh, recommend for internal transfer or what's this? The internal transfer within the organization to a higher substantive role. Say, for instance, if a staff is being on the role for a couple of years but performing extremely very well in in a performance year, then it would be best to award the person to actually drive him or her in doing his or her work. One of the areas that I see is to allow staff who are requesting for studies should be allowed to go and advance their skills in terms of study. This is another way that the organizations uh, that are unable to provide remuneration uh, packages, uh, say for example from a pu uh, public service organization, you know, we have uh, salary scales and levels are limited. So uh, and an opportunity that we could give to staff is to allow them to go for trainings, Another opportunity that we can also give to staff is to allow them to continue to uh, uh, advance in areas that they desire to uh, uh, master their skills in order to support uh, government departments and organizations. So this would be uh, two key areas that we would be uh, supporting uh, staff and, uh, uh, and the performing staff especially. Just a bit more uh, in terms of recognition um, for the hard work that a lot of employees do. I think so. a lot of times people just feel like they're giving a lot to the company or to their employer and they're not being recognized for the jobs that they're doing, whether it's more hours or whether it's just a pat on the back saying well done or even something as small as like employee of the month type of thing, just uh, appreciation um, goes a long way. Yeah. There you go. Good to see you, Neville, out there with your cap and getting some photos. <laughs> <laughs> and great to see the boss of ICCC shares. I, I honestly thought that was Neville, honestly. The younger <laughs> version of Neville. <laughs> uh, we also got some comments on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's what see what they, uh, what they say. Yeah, you can't really read that one, but... Uh, A paid family vacation for yeah. Medicare. Yeah. Upskilling, training, job placement for exposure, learning and development, yeah, all the yeah. stuff. That says it all. Yeah, that's it. If we could have all of that, it would be great. That's, yeah. exactly yeah. plus, that's the plus, ideal. Plus, uh, maybe get, a, get uh, the company team into a sports, a corporate sport or something. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. But that really helps uh, build relationships between uh, members of different sections in your company. I really found that it helps a lot. Easter yeah. Cup coming up? Yeah. Charity soccer. Leon, you're over that? No, I'm no good at soccer anymore. No? Yeah, I'm terrible at soccer. <laughs> yeah. Just footy, yeah? Yeah, just rustic to rugby. 
<laughs> Thanks. Right. Seven, seven's coming up, Shaz. Yes. Sir. Okay, so there you go. Some ideas on employee incentives and something that's very important within the workforce to keep um, employees motivated. Yeah, now, if you have something you would like to share about the show or comment on one of our stories this morning, including the employee incentive segment, please feel free to via our social pages. You can go to our Facebook page, Good Morning PNG, and post your comments there. And you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram as well. We always receive a lot of comments, which is great. So keep them coming. Okay, we're off for a break now. On the other side, uh, more news, sports and weather. And we are talking to Scott Whitey. Don't go anywhere. This is Good Morning PNG. Welcome back. You are watching Good Morning PNG this fine Saturday morning, I hope, Shaz. Yeah, it is fine. It's a <laughs> good day. It's a good day. All right, it's time for the news headlines, and here is Neville Choi. Thanks, Tez. Uh, the biggest story of the week, obviously, Finance Minister Richard, uh, I'm sorry, not Richard Marge. Finance Minister James Marape announcing his resignation from his portfolio on Thursday. <laughs> now, Marape was the first PNC candidate to be returned in the last election, and he said he had lost the ear of the Prime Minister. While Mr. Marape has resigned from his finance portfolio, he remains a member of the PNC party. The Prime Minister was asked about uh, Mr. Marape's resignation. He is in New Island, and he responded saying he accepted Mr. Marape's resignation and that the important work for the development of the country would continue regardless. Um, with uh, social media and the rumours that went rife after Marape's resignation, there was also the rumour that the Minister for Defence and Member for Telephone and Solan Mirasim was going to be resigning also. But he came out yesterday and said and told the media that all that was being shared on social media, all the rumours were not true. People of Telephone, our PNC Defence Force organisation, and the entire country that the news on the social media yesterday of me, Honorable Solan Mirishim, the Minister for Defense and the member for Telephoning, uh, being resigned as the Minister for Defense yesterday is all fake, is all false, and is not true. And of course, the 262 kilometer long Boleminski Highway in New Island was reopened this week by Prime Minister Peter O'Neill after it was upgraded and completely sealed. The highway, which runs the length of the province from Kaveng Town to Namatanai, is now the longest sealed road in the Pacific region. Originally named Kaiser Wilhelm Schoss during the German Protectorate, it was renamed in 1921 to the East Coast Road. After the country gained independence in 1975, the highway was again renamed after Franz Boleminski, who was the German district officer from 1910 until the First World War. That's it for the news on Good Morning PNG. It's back to you, Taz. Neville, the knock-on effect that resignations have when ministers uh, resign. Yes, and, and I mean, the knock-on effect is felt everywhere, even on social media. Yeah, absolutely. So, so apparently, well, Solon Mirsa, Minister for Defence, had a press conference just to allay any rumours that he wasn't. Yes, uh, he made it very clear and in very, very precise words yeah. that none of the rumours are true. And the picture we had up, there was a group of nine, huh? on social media that were purportedly resigning? Yes, there were other several ministers that everybody was saying were going to toe the line and do the same. We just have to wait and see if that happens or not. Mm. Shaza, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment in, the, in PNG politics. All right, now time for the sports headlines. Morning again to Peter Pasal. Thanks again, Shaz. Uh, the sports will start with rugby league. The SB PNG Hunters make a long track to Abel in Queensland today for their round six intra Super Cup class against the CQ Cappers at Allen Magandale Park. Winless after five rounds and looking like a wooden spoon contender in 2019, coach Michael Marum takes a side featuring yet another change to his house with Jerry Temme set to wear the number seven jersey alongside 5'8", Ase Boas. Moses Meninga, Charlie Simon, Stanton Albert and Blender Bavu return to the side after missing last week's 28-6 loss to the North Devils. The game is scheduled to kick off at 6.35 p.m. this evening. In athletics news, qualifying next year for the Tokyo Olympics is the main goal for jumper Rally Caputin, who is 
on the Gold Coast for a training stint. Kelpatin, who is the Pacific Games champion and women's national record holder in the long, triple, and high jumps, said she would initially be focusing on the Apia Games in July, but her long-term goal was to build up form in order to qualify for the 2020 Olympics. The 26-year-old, who won three gold medals at the 2015 Pacific Games, last competed at the national trials in Kimber, West New Britain last month, where she was the only elite competitor in the women's jumps. <coughs> Kelpatin will train under coach Phil Newton on the Gold Coast until the Pacific Games. And in fishing news, the 44th National Game Fishing title started yesterday off the coast of Hula, Central Province, with a confirmed 150 anglers in 20 boats taking part in the nine-day event. Fishing started from Hood Point towards Gary and Red Scar Bay. Anglers from around the country and as far as Cairns, Australia, will compete with the aim to catch a variety of skipjack tuna, mackerel, marlin, billfish, and rainbow runners for points. According to tournament director Matthew Gagan, boats will be allowed to go out as early as 5 a.m. and lines in at 6 p.m. while weighing is at 7 p.m. Any boats coming in later than that will be disqualified. The final day of competition is on Sunday, April the 21st. And finally, to NRL scores so far this weekend, round five of the NRL kicked off on Thursday night with the visitors West Tigers beating the Brisbane Broncos 22-16 at Suncorp Stadium. While last night, the Titans got over the Panthers 30 points to 24 on the Gold Coast, while the undefeated Melbourne Storm continued on their winning ways over the North Queensland Cowboys at Dairy Farmer Stadium, winning 18 points to 12. And while on that, uh, Cameron Smith became the highest point scorer of all time, uh, scoring about 20, reaching 2,420 points. The news was not so good for Kumul Nana McDonald, who faces a possible season and injury when he fractured and possibly broke his left ankle in that game. And Shaz, those are the top stories in sports for this morning. Thanks, Peter. And our best wishes again to Nene on a speedy recovery. Sorry, Liam. I hope he's... Sorry, yeah. yeah. Not a good sight when he got uh, taken off on the minicab. Mm. And also, Peter, the guest speaker for this year's SP Sports Awards was also announced this week. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, her name is... Well, it's, it's going to be a bit hard to pronounce her name, but her name is... Kerry uh, someone? Yeah, Kerry Pothast. And she's a... Um, a volleyball great from Australia. She's uh, representing the country in beach volleyball, I guess, and um, she's going to be the guest speaker giving a message on uh, how to become a champion. And she's, I think she's a, she's a, a Hall of Famer in Australia. Absolutely, so a triple, yeah, triple yeah, yeah. Uh, Olympian. Awesome. Cool. And Shazzy will be emceeing. I will be. Wishka. There yeah, we go. Looking forward to it. Shout out to the guys. Thanks, SP. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now for a brief look at the weather. Morning again to Richard Magee. He has not resigned. He's still with us. <laughs> Look, um, I'll be taking up my post after this week uh, with the news. So, okay. Look, we'll go for the regional uh, forecast from now uh, to tomorrow. So, with, um, with sorry, here we go. With isolated showers and thunderstorms for the uh, southern region, uh, you're looking at maybe a, a few clouds. It's going to be pretty uh, cloudy, along with um, uh, Momase. Uh, there'll be cloudy weather. Uh, Southeasterly winds, and it'll be still a bit cold. Uh, up to um, the NGI region, uh, thousands of thunderstorms are forecasted. Um, and of course, up to the uh, Highlands region, it'll be all. Uh, <laughs> anyway, up to the Highlands region, it'll be um, a bit um, cloudy with fog and showers uh, during the um, day. And that's, uh, that's it for the weather, Shaz. You sure? That's going to be the, yeah? I'm not, I'm not, really, not really sure now. Uh, tell you what, it's because I got up this new, new post with finance. I'm, I'm just potential finance minister. It's a hard job. <laughs> Don't resign. Don't resign. <laughs> we love you. Hang in there. <laughs> the country needs you. Thanks, Rich. Okay, our next guest is our very own Lay Bureau Chief, Scott Wade, who looks after news operations in Lay and the regions around the country. Morning, Scott. Hope it's not too early. Morning, Taz. Morning, Shaz. Morning. How are you? Good to see you. Very well. Did you just get in this morning or? No, it was yesterday. Just still Sorry. for the 5 a.m. wake up. Mm. So. You look fresh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, lots happening in politics. We just touched on it with Neville, but where do you see this going with the resignation of Marpe? He'll remain in government, PNC? Yeah, he's stated very clearly that he'll remain uh, as a PNC member. Um, I, I guess what you need to really understand is the... 
political statements you can't read take take it for face value. There's always a political undercurrent, and yeah. you know, the conversation happens behind the scenes. So even if uh, Morapi says he's resigned, he's stayed with the PNC. And uh, as I wrote this morning on my blog, uh, you know the political glass man are having difficulty trying to predict where this is going. Um, so. Uh, like we saw with uh, Solan Mirsin, the people were predicting a resignation with three others and bang, Solan Mirsin comes out and says, no, I'm not resigning, it's all fake news. So yeah, uh, Google will who definitely have a difficult time trying to, you know. <laughs> who comes up with these rumors though? I'd like to know that. Why do they get that and it just goes all over Facebook? Yeah, there was and quite a few people talking about uh, Solan Mirsin and a few other names came up. Um, Duma's name came up as well. Um, I, I think Duma reacted angrily to the ABC telling them that no, I haven't resigned. I'm still a part of the government. So uh, that's, that's the conversation that's happening right now. Right. And Parliament sits in a few weeks the, in May, the May sitting. They get recalled or? Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure about the dates, but yes, they, they will sit um, a lot of people are talking about the impending vote of no confidence. Um, that uh, also is something that remains to be seen and actioned in, on, on the floor of Parliament. Mm. So, yeah. I read this morning on your, um, I think it was your blog, um, it's, we've seen a lot of incidences where, you know, the missing girls yes. and there's been a, a, a rise in, in you know, crime um, in our communities. And it's interesting that you pointed out, let's not make them comfortable let's, in, in the surrounding that they have, you know, this, the criminals and whatever they're doing to disrupt the, you know, peace and thingy of the, the communities. You yes. want to elaborate further on that? Yeah, that, that example comes from Lay because um, communities have always taken uh, ownership of their own uh, well-being in, in, in the Morbid province. So, and that dates back, uh, I think, to 2011. You, you, you can remember there was a riot in Lay where it yeah. all came from petty crime. I think the communities have matured a lot, so they don't want to repeat of the 2011 scenario, um, but they are supporting police, and uh, I, I can pretty much safely say that crime rate in Leh has dropped because oh, the serious, seen that yeah, as well. serious crimes have, have dipped a lot uh, since uh, Anthony Wagambi arrived in mm. 2015 um, and he's initiated uh, several uh, programs like the SRU units. Um, you got the toll-free number, huh? Yes, yeah. Yeah. toll-free number yeah. so you can report crimes through WhatsApp. Um, you can have a direct link to the commanders and the uh, the police force. Which is a great uh, idea. Yep, through Facebook and uh, Facebook Messenger. So it, uh, it's monitored 24-7. There's a 24-7 call center there. They're, they're also building, building a communication center that complements all that. So it's uh, very, very positive times for Lee. Yeah, good stuff. It's gone around the country outside of Lee. I mean, the other regions, the Highlands, the Nigini Islands, Omase. I mean, what's news? I mean, what, what are the people talking about? What are they following? Does politics really get down? To that level? To the yeah, really uh, politics getting down to that yeah. level. Um, there was a uh, d this uh, thing happening in uh, Goroka where, with the recounting of the symbol governor's mm, that's seat. That's right, yeah. So uh, a bit of trouble there, but uh, brought very quickly under control by police. Um, so you've got uh, two governor seat candidates uh, going head to head with their supporters in Goroka. Uh, as you know, the recounting couldn't be done in Kundiawa. It had to be brought to Goroka, which was, the, mm. uh, I guess, a palatable choice yeah. for supporters. <laughs> they didn't want it anywhere else. Lay would have been too far. So, Funnily mm. enough, I was in Goroka that, uh, around that time, and it was uh, yeah, absolutely packed when they arrived. I think a 20-convoy vehicle brought the boxes up from mm. uh, Kundiawa to Goroka for the counting. But all is well in Goroka, one of the better places uh, in PNG. Okay. Yes, Connie? Right. Yeah, no, I think um, um, a point from Scott about uh, the politics and how people are polarized by it. Um, thankfully, we're, we're so diverse at the moment that we're not probably going on the path of some other countries or developed countries. But I think politics and now on social media, everybody has a voice. Mm -hmm. But it's the, the voice and the opinions that you put up, whether they're, they're factual or not, I think that's the thing that we need to be careful. Yeah, I, I totally agree Absolutely. with what Neville said. It's too, we're becoming like experts at everything. Mm -hmm. and I've seen a lot of people you know, jumping on Facebook and saying, oh, here come the political analysts, oh, here come the rugby league commentators, and that sort of thing. But just make sure it's factual, and that's it, right? As long as, as long as it's factual. But Scott, I've got to say, out in the regions, internet's not so big. Facebook, 
social media is not big. Am I correct or is it big <laughs> oh, out there come on. in the oh. rural areas? Uh, oh, social media, uh, I guess social media, uh, I was giving a, a presentation yesterday to uh, the guys at the justice uh, sector, sector. Yep. forgot the name. Um, but we get much of our uh, user-generated content in the news from rural areas. Oh, wow. And that's because they can afford 800 Kina smartphones. So uh, they're not Wait. spending their money on tickets to mm. come to Port Moresby, but they're buying phones, and, and those phones are being used for... Uh, things like uh, videos and pictures, uh, going back to uh, the earthquake that happened in Hela, yes. much, within the first 24 hours we were getting all user-generated content on smartphones being sent to us via the MTV page and WhatsApp wow. and all that. Yeah. Amazing. There you go. That answers your question, Absolutely, Tess. Absolutely, it does. There you go. <laughs> so I hope you're watching this morning out in the regions. Yeah. <laughs> You've live streamed this. <laughs> okay, thank you, Scott, for joining us this morning. It was good to see you. No worries. Awesome stuff. All right, stay with us. When we come back, we'll have an exclusive interview with the president of the autonomous region of Bougainville, Chief John Momis. This is Good Morning PNG. See you shortly. Welcome back, and as we mentioned before the break, we have an exclusive interview with one of the household names of PNG politics in Chief John Momis. The president of the autonomous region of Bougainville is nearing the end of his political career. The former Catholic priest was first elected into the House of Assembly in 1972 and spearheaded the Constitutional Planning Committee, the body that designed PNG's national constitution. For the man regarded as the father of PNG's constitution, it has indeed been a long journey, one that will end when the autonomous region elects its next House of Representatives next year. So what's next for Chief John Momis after an illustrious political career? Meribatulo spoke to the President at his residence in Bowen. First of all, Mr. President, thank you so much for taking time to speak with MTV at your residence here in Buin. It's such an honour for us to be here and thank you so much for the opportunity. 40 years in politics, well, more than 40 years. Uh, this will be your final term as president. What has been your highlight in, in your long political career? Many people in Bougainville will say, uh, we don't see Momis' name on bridges and buildings and monuments and all kinds of things. Uh, and that, that is correct. Uh, my ambition in life has not been to be has not been construction infrastructure, although they are very, very important. My approach is different. My approach is that, or my belief is that elected members of parliament are legislators, basically the they're legislators, policy makers, uh, developers. They, 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 uh, they must take uh, initiatives to pioneer new things, blaze a trail. Uh, discern the science of the times, find out what the people's real needs and aspirations are and from their experience and principles of uh, knowledge they might have then, deter then work out that's exactly what the people are talking about and what are their real needs and aspirations. Once you do retire from politics, what's next for Chief John Momis? Ah, difficult to say but um, of course, I'll have to finish my book. I started uh, writing my book when I was uh, a visiting fellow at USP in Fiji for one year. But then when I got appointed to China as ambassador, uh, you know, your time is taken up with uh, protocol, with appointments. And of course, when I was recalled to come back to Bougainville, things were made worse. I don't have any time at all. But I still have a dream of completing my book. It's very important. So. Um, in future, people won't, will not just quote what they think Momis said. They will actually quote what Momis did say, as I, uh, you know, as I thought about issues and important uh, matters that affected our lives in Bougainville and in PNG. I'm very grateful. I had a very uh, uh, long and in-depth involvement in the evolution of the democratic system of government. I believe I'm a Democrat. I believe in 
uh, democra democracy, human rights, justice, peace. Your lovely wife has always stood beside you. How do you keep this relationship going for such a long time? Well, I think it's uh, f for any of us who are involved in anything to do with teamwork, uh, appreciates uh, collaboration, appreciate that, uh, you know, it's a team spirit, collaboration, partnership is very important. And it's the same in marriage, same in anything we do in the country, unless we're a partnership, unless we collaborate, critical cooperation, I call it. You know, we don't just say yes and no, but we critically analyze things and critically decide to collaborate for a higher good, you know, and the, and the higher good for us is the common good of the people of, of, of a nation. What is your message to Bougainvillians on Bougainville now as well as Bougainvillians outside as we prepare for this important date? My message to the people of Bougainville is to unite. We must put aside our differences and we must joyfully celebrate the process that now belongs to us. We must be, uh, as the saying goes, man proposes and God disposes. We must commit ourselves to do the right thing by the peace agreement, which binds us and binds the national government to purely and simply implement the peace agreement. Don't conjure up all kinds of uh, negative negativities, you know. We must believe that the peace agreement is a good agreement and we are very privileged, you know. The Bougainvilleans are now being given this unique opportunity to determine their own future. But the, the right, the, you know, the, the, the right of self-determination, which belongs to everybody, in our case is, uh, is modified or must be implemented within the context of the Bougainville Peace Agreement. That means the two governments, after we've expressed our uh, our strong view, uh, whether it be independence or higher autonomy, uh, at the end of the day, the two governments must consult, negotiate, and make a decision that would uh, uh, maintain peace and reach some kind of mutuality, some kind of uh, mutual acceptance to both sides. Mr. President, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yep. Wow, what a great exclusive and what a career. Absolutely. Okay, stay with us. We're going for a final break. When we come back, it's time for our panel discussion. Look at this food here in France. Thank you to G Cafe for the wonderful muffins and um, I see some sandwiches there yeah. this morning. That oh my gosh, great that's ham, a nice cheese, shot. Tomato, that's yum. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Time now for a panel discussion. Right. And last week we talked about policing the marine environment. Our topic this morning, Shaz, is on the extinction of wildlife, disrupting the ecological balance. Every living creature depends on each other for mm. survival. And when one is removed, Shaz, from the environment, right. the normal cycle of food change is disturbed. Thus, the ecosystem becomes unstable. Yeah. And as you know, the most known species that became extinct was the dinosaur about 65 million yeah. or so years ago. When you get into primary school, it's the first thing. Dinosaur yeah, gets an extinction. Yeah. And yeah. more recently is the eastern puma that has officially been I mean, declared extinct. Wow. The eastern puma. Yeah, the white rhino is another species that's on the brink of extinction with only two females alive today. That's pretty sad. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it's un unbelievable, the, uh, the white rhino. Um, mm. There they are. The only two females. That's it. They're going to be out <laughs> in the next... No, it's, I'm being serious. It's sad, though. Well, reproduction yeah. is out of the yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's it. That's, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. You finally got that. I didn't get the <laughs> right words. Don't be out, Joe. Well, back home, one of the critically endangered species is the long-beaked echidna. Uh, the echidna is very rare and elusive. Have you seen it, though? 
It's elusive. Right? How could I? So it lives on. <laughs> that probably wasn't the right question to ask, but it lives and breathes in areas where little or no human presence. See, I answered yeah, that again. Go. Yeah, and look, uh, populations of five species of marsupials apparently, you know, are facing that straight uh, dire threats. In dire straits. <laughs> oh, I'm having a great one. <laughs> the threat in, uh, in the country and uh, such, uh, such that's been classified endangered on the international union. Critically. Oh, well, critically endangered. How more critical do you have to get before you're dead? It's like endangered, same thing. <laughs> Con cons <laughs> right. Conservation of nature's red list, apparently, of threatened uh, species. Among the marsupials facing extinction, uh, apparently from Adam Bry and Suzuki, I was talking to them the other day. Uh, <laughs> the black spotted cascas is said to be living oh, wow. in uh, undisturbed forest of Papua New Guinea. Oh, wow. Yeah. There she is. Mm. Yeah, without some uh, form of protection, the remaining few habitats will cease to be available, driving its species to extinction. And other mammals facing similar danger of extinction in uh, the New Guinea big eared bat and the lowland brush mouse. Those are two, uh, cool. they sound like cute animals. I wouldn't <laughs> mind having them as pets. That's, that's pretty cute. Uh, what? Oh, that's yeah, well, maybe on second thoughts, not so much the bat. <laughs> but the mouse, yeah, I can do the mouse. Pretty can stand dogs. What are you going to do with pets? I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just forget it. Forget it. Okay, finally, what can you do to pre prevent extinction? Um, obviously, we need to start educating ourselves on the environmental issues that are taking place around us and what we can do to um, control it. Yeah, overall urgent action is needed um, if, we are to, if we have any hope of controlling or have any impact on extinction. Yeah, Taz. All right, that's it. What a show! Yeah. Guys. I'm winded from that conversation, <laughs> especially from Professor Pusali. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. Listen, big thanks to our guests this morning, Leon Gawi, Scott Wade, and our utmost appreciation to Chief John Momis uh, for that one-on-one -on -one interview with Mir Batulo in Boeing. Yeah, absolutely. We've got another great show for you next Saturday, Shaza. Yes. We catch up with one of PNG's best contemporary artists, Jeffrey Fieger. Mm. And Shaz, we are going to check out the most watched ocean or seaside set movies. Wait, what? Yeah, bikinis and lifesavers, mate. Ah, right. <laughs> okay. And in keeping with the ocean theme, the National Game Fishing Titles uh, wraps up next weekend. Hopefully we'll have some winners here with us. Plus our panel discussion is on the deforestation and or the desolation of our forests with little to no care of replanting. Unbelievable. Well, that's all coming up next Saturday. Make sure you join us. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Nev, you're a champion. Thanks for sitting in again. No problem at all. Thanks, you're a machine. <laughs> Pete, go the hunters this afternoon. Yeah, tonight. fingers crossed. Hopefully Richie, the mighty Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday, back to back win. That's and right. Shazza, you'll win one. But so. Really, people? <laughs> get really? Off the, get off the Thursday really? matches and maybe you'll win one. Go hunters. <laughs> go. <laughs> Absolutely. You will. <laughs> Stop it. We'll Stop catch it. you again <laughs> next Saturday, bright and early at 6 a.m. From all of us here, have a great weekend.